This conference will now be recorded. Okay. Welcome, everyone. Um, I just started recording this so we can save it later. And uh, I'd like to welcome everyone here to join us and to our all area professionals discuss uh, current trends, you know, practices we're using, equipment we're using, you know, what are the different uh, where about workflows that you've been put in, in progress or in, in production? Um, what have you dealt with? You know, what questions have you been asked? What solutions have you come up with? So just kind of a, a forum here for everybody to get on and talk about it. And I think uh, myself, I haven't been doing too much work over the summer. I'm pre preparing for the fall and trying to figure out how we're going to do a, um, a remote yet in-house. So it'll be kind of a hybrid solution is what we're thinking of doing. So we're looking at different applications where students can use cell phones, laptops, iPads, or other tablets to uh, transmit the video from the tablet or device or put a camera into it and send it back to us. And then we switch it and send it back out and doing remote switching or do we put everything in the cloud? So, and what's the cost to all that? So th those are some of the things that we're working on. Um, I found a couple of different apps, you know, the Teradex stuff I'm using, the, the live to air, the downside with that is that's all iPad, um, all iOS driven, but it seems to work good for when you're on iOS devices. But that being said, um, I'm going to turn it over to Sean for a little bit to discuss what he's done at Newman and he's in production right now doing, he's been putting, keeping the radio station on the air. So, Sean, you want to take over? Sure. So I can talk um, on a few different aspects. Um, first being the, the higher ed aspect of, of what we're doing. So um, those of you that are in sales, um, you know that everybody is trying to scramble to find out what's the best solution for um, remote learning right now in the higher ed world. And one of the things that we are doing is um, preparing for a hybrid model. So our students are, are planning to come back, but we're going to be offering every course to be recorded um, through Microsoft Teams using uh, our, our learning management system, Blackboard Learn, uh, as well as uh, Panopto. Uh, some of our classes and classrooms are looking at using Panopto for multicam uh, recordings and um, I can tell you this not every classroom is equipped with cameras and webcams in particular um, they've been hard to get a hold of I, I'm using a, a Logitech Brio that I purchased back in March and it only showed up last week so um, we're, we're trying to get creative we have all-in-ones in some of the classrooms but there are about a dozen to two dozen classrooms that don't have any sort of webcam and um, we're, we're trying to figure out the best solutions uh, right now for, for that aspect of uh, the remote learning because if a student doesn't feel comfortable, we're not forcing them to come in. And if our class sizes uh, are at um, capacity for the room, we're splitting the class in half where half come a couple of days a week and the other half um, will be online and then they, they flip and uh, they don't have to come synchronously. We're going to do it synchronously, but we're also going to let them uh, go back and rewatch the course if they don't want to come to class or if the, you know they don't want to uh, come that day uh, at that time. So it, it's it, it's interesting um, on that aspect. Um, we're having to relearn how to teach some of these production courses. So I teach radio and, and audio and television, and um, teaching students hands-on stuff without being hands-on isn't really <laughs> something that I'm looking forward to, to having to uh, to do again. Um, and I know, Mark, you're, you're kind of in the same boat as I am. I, I have found some solutions that kind of give students the, the experience at home. Um, we've been using uh, Vimeo's live stream studio software, and it's been um, pretty good. They, they've gotten their latency down to about a uh, one second uh, audio latency uh, for delivery. Um, and everything's being used through a, uh, a Vimeo link. So the students get a Vimeo link and we can have five remote students come into the switcher and then I can give students the access to the switcher that's in my house uh, and they get a, a soft screen that pops up on their, uh, their Google uh, Chrome uh, browser and they can take, they can see the video sources, they can fire off uh, you know, digital uh, videos or, or graphics. They can hit stream, they can record, and everything is stored uh, 
through like a third party site like Google Drive or Dropbox and it transcodes the videos uh, that way. So it's been it's been interesting. Um, that's not to say that there's not some flaws. Students have bad Wi-Fi or, you know, uh, my kids are watching Frozen 2 for the hundred millionth time. Uh, depending on bandwidth, you know, you might have a little bit of uh, error. Uh, for the radio side of the house, we're using, um, through the VPN client that we have, I'm using Comrex devices. So uh, Comrex Live Shot for television, Comrex uh, accesses for audio, and I'm getting, I'm able to go live from my house and I have a VPN client uh, that lets me use a soft surface and I can control the faders of the of the uh, console remotely and I can pull up our automation system uh, here through a, a VNC path. So um, we're trying, uh, we're using Discord to do live shows with students that are uh, wanting to go on the air more than uh, with more than one person. Uh, so we're trying to find all these free apps that are out there and Discord, if you haven't used it before, um, it's really great because it's 128K audio for recording. It'll multi-track record for you. And best of all, it's free. Uh, it also does video calling. And uh, much like Microsoft Teams or Slack, there's a whole bunch of um, channels that you can create. So we're running different shows through different channels, uh, similar to Teams. Um, and you know we're able to do podcast recordings that way. We're able to do live uh, shows that way because I can control the console from here. Um, so we're we're trying to find anything that sounds good and looks good and getting them uh, onto air that way. Um, we've also started, you know, I sent students, you know, some $50 microphones like blue mics, the uh, USB microphones, and they sound pretty darn good. And then uh, you can probably tell my lighting looks really good. I have a bunch of these Genere uh, panels and I have one mounted just using one of the small rig um, clamps. So let me see. So just a plain old clamp with an extended arm. Uh, it was 30 bucks on Amazon. So you know we're buying a bunch of these LED lights to get ready for students not being able to take out equipment uh, like RE kits and um, you know the Diva lighting. So we're trying to find the best way to give students an opportunity to be hands-on with equipment, um, but also mind how are we going to rent equipment out to students. Um, if it leaves campus, do we want it coming back to campus? Do we have to put it in quarantine? So these are all the things that we're trying to figure out right now. Um, and if anyone has some solutions for that, we'd really be grateful for it. Um, we're buying uh, 15 three-point lighting LED kits that are like 115 bucks a piece because I, I can't afford to buy a bunch of RE and, and Diva lights for every single student in a, in a video class. So um, we're trying to find the best way to, to do this. Um, and keep the germ circle as small as we can, given that we're a, cl a, a school of 2,500 students. Uh, sorry for rambling, but there's there's a lot there, and this is an industry that we are doing broadcast, but it's an industry that people don't think of uh, when it comes to technology. One big thing that we're looking forward to is, uh, by the end of this month, Microsoft is making N uh, Teams NDI compliant, um, which would be huge for the broadcast world. Uh, they're they're taking the Skype backbone and turning it uh, turning Teams into that backbone um, to make for higher quality uh, codec and control of Teams. And we're really pushing uh, Microsoft uh, through some of the different people that we know. We're really pushing them to give us control over bandwidth and uh, quality of the um, camera. Because if you if you've been on our previous calls when we've done Microsoft Teams live. It kind of looks kind of crappy once in a while, uh, and we don't have any control over that, even if you have a strong, stable bandwidth connection. So we're trying to, um, we're, we're really pushing to get that compression rate to be um, not automatic on Microsoft's backbone. We're really pushing for them to give, uh, you know, more control to the end users, and they're they're telling us that it's coming. So um, take that for what it's worth. Mark, back to you in the news desk. Yeah. Well, I'll. Uh say this we we're looking at some of the marshall cb630 cameras and putting them in and i think we're doing at least 30 classrooms that we're putting them in and trying to tie them into an application and we can't we're not forcing people to use teams or zoom or go to meeting but that's where professors are going to be doing online hybrid courses in, in regards to this you know the studio i don't know what i'm going to do and it, it's hard because it's 
you know, different faculty want to do different things. So it, it, it's a challenge. So, you know, we want to talk more to to bring open this up to everybody else that's out there um, that, that's on the call. Peter, Pete, Dover, um, Chuck, Paul. Uh, well, what are you guys doing to help people this? broadcast? Please tell us. <laughs> What are some projects that uh, you can talk about that that you're involved with? Uh, so I'll we'll send you guys the link to it. But uh, approximately a month ago, Canon came out with a way to web webcast their DSLR cameras. Um, they've been testing it and it's purely beta, but it's out there for anyone to download. And then if you've got a Canon camera. Plug it into your computer with a USB cord, and there you go. You can webcast on whatever format you want Teams, Skype, Zoom. So I'll send that over to you guys. Our service team also came out with their COVID 19 cleaning tips for the gear. So I'll send that to you guys also. So if any of your students or teachers have a Canon camera at home, then you don't have to go out and buy something new. And um, I believe our website has the list of cameras that we have been testing on and that other folks have just tested out to see what works, what doesn't. Uh, so it's a pretty extensive list. It includes the cameras in the, the cheaper cameras in the Rebel line and their yeah, power shots and stuff like that. Yeah. I guess I have to unmute. Thanks, Dover, for that. Um, I put that up in the notes section too. That Canon's coming up with a best practices for cleaning and uh, the USB driver. For yeah, the online. EOS webcam beta thing. Um, when it works, like it, it looks really, really good. Um, I, I've struggled with it, but uh, I'm also a non, you know, normal user. So I have three different camera options in here, and I think my my computer gets mad at me. Um, but when it works, like it looks, it looks studio quality. Well, I might as well jump in here uh, since I have to do a, a tech check at, at uh, two o'clock. Um, and by the way, I'm doing a webinar next. Uh, it's the 18th, whatever the 18th is next Thursday. Um, I think it's at one o'clock on my uh, my CES recap. So um, you'll probably all get an invite to it, but you might want to join in for an hour. I, I guarantee you'll find it entertaining. Okay, yeah, and if you're okay with it, we'll put it up on um, on our Facebook page, so that shares with people too. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I'm doing it with uh, Joel and Maya up at Simpty, so just ask them. You know, and if it's okay with them, it's okay with me. Okay. Uh, anyway, um, off the subject of live production, there's a uh, a local church up my way. Uh, Carversville United Church of Christ, it's not very big, doesn't have a lot of members, but the members tend to skew older. And um, we had just had a Jazz Vespers there in early March when they started shutting things down. And the uh, pastor's cabinet decided to be safe to do virtual services, not have people come in because some people have uh, asthma, COPD, you know, other uh, ailments. And they're reluctant to come to church. So um, since I basically handle their AV stuff. They asked me was a way to do that. And interestingly enough, I had bought some equipment prior to this to record my band playing on March 21st, which never happened, of course. So um, I may do with what I had. We did, decided not to live stream because it's a really old sanctuary and we don't have a uh, any kind of a wired ethernet connection in there. And I'm not about to trust uh, wireless in that building. So I dragged out three cameras, a Panasonic Lumix G85, a Lumix point and shoot I bought right before CES called the uh, Z70, which is a 30 to one optical zoom and a Canon Vixia, that will make Dover happy, um, that I've had for a few years, a little camcorder. And what I did was I set these up in the balcony to cover the uh, lectern where the minister would deliver the service to nobody, just himself. So I have uh, two views on the balcony, I have a, a wide shot and a tight close up in case he flubs a line, which he does regularly. And then when he turns to do prayers at the altar, that's when the little Canon Vixia camera comes into play. So all three cameras are running simultaneously. And to record audio, since we have a very good audio system, I just took line level off the audio and ran into a Tascam DR40. 
And so that's recording uh, uh, not no audio, no ambient off the um, point and shoot cameras, which as you know, all have AGC on them and tend to boost background noise and everything else. I can mix a little of that in for ambience if I want it, but I'm basically recording directly from a wireless audio technica mic that he's wearing through the board or through the, the rack mixer up in the uh, choir loft. And what he does is once I have all the cameras running and everything's framed, the exposure's all set, he brings his hands together and claps them. I can even show you what that looks like here if my camera works. Let's see if it comes up. Yep. So what he does is before uh, he starts his sermon, he does this. Well, that shows up as a pretty sharp transient on the audio and on the audio of all three cameras. So I go into Premiere, I drag all the timelines together to line them up, trim the excess and go through and just alternate cutaways, clip out mistakes and everything that he makes. Uh, we usually insert a little musical number, uh, typically a motivational song or a prayer or some kind of thing. Then he turns to do his prayers, then he concludes and we cut away to a shot of the website. People can watch these things on the website. It takes me about three hours to edit all of it. I have to do a little audio sweetening and clean up here and there. And then uh, the finished file is rendered at 720p60 and I upload that to YouTube. And then once it's on YouTube, their webmaster then provides a link directly to the church's website. Um, and I can provide to you, and I will, a link if you wanna see what these look like because several things came out of this that were very surprising to me. Number one, I'm sending everybody the uh, the link. This is for last Sunday service. We do these on Friday and we, we post them Friday night and then people can watch them whenever they want. Um, you would expect a DSLR, which uh, the Panasonic I think is a, is a four thirds uh, sensor, uh, micro four thirds, I don't remember exactly, it does a great job. The Z70 blew me away at how well that works. Uh, I think it's a two thirds inch sensor. And um, maybe that's micro four thirds and the Panasonic is the other, I don't remember which one. But even zoomed all the way in, that's a Leica lens, zoomed all the way in, 30 times optical zoom, I get very little noise um, off of the shots. And we're just using whatever lighting is available in the church. We're not using any supplementary lighting. So you can see for yourself, you can look at the cutaways, you'll see a little bit of noise in his face in the background, but otherwise it's acceptable. Um, and this has worked out great. So we've been doing this every weekend since I think the 15th might've been the first one. Um, even though Pennsylvania is going yellow and I think they're probably going to wind up going green in a few weeks. I don't know how much longer we're going to do this, but at the same time, I'm researching installing a permanent PTZ camera, which I can then patch in the house audio to, and that will home run back to the office where the internet connection is. The main sanctuary was built in 1837. It's your typical plaster with wire frame. So it's basically a Faraday cage. So you really need a wired connection. So what we're looking into now is either HD base T for the extension, or I'm kind of going for USB all the way. Because if you notice a lot of these pan and tilt zoot cameras only have a USB output. So I can take audio from the mixer. I can take USB output from it, put that on a USB extender. There's, a, there's available that support version two. I haven't seen it for version three yet. And the idea is that if I'm not there, which is often, somebody can come in, turn on the audio system, turn on the mics, log into whatever streaming service they want to use, Facebook or something like that, and then just let it rock and roll. It's ready to go. And when they're all done, they can just turn it off and walk away. Uh, because obviously it's a lot of work to keep shooting and editing all of this into the product that you see, that you'll see if you go to the link. Um, and I don't want to keep doing it. I mean, it's, you know, it, I, I've so far I've accumulated almost 80 gigabytes worth of video between all the different camera takes and uh, pre-edits and everything else. I'm making B&H very happy ordering uh, external 250 gig solid state drives to store all this stuff. But I want to stream it. And then once we have the streaming set up, then we can make a provision for recording. So the things I've learned from this is that these um, point and shoot cameras and DSLRs are fine. I pick 720p because it's the most bandwidth efficient HD format there is out there. Uh, there was no reason to use 1080p. Um, secondly, I was astounded at how good the point and shoot camera worked. Um, and I probably have some pictures I can send everybody to from that. Um, so this gives me a master shot, a cutaway, and then a shot from the side which we also use when he lights the candles at the beginning of the service. Then I go outside and I get B-roll of the church itself, uh, flowers at Easter time. Uh, we shot 
uh, this, this past day, uh, Sunday service this past Tuesday, because I'm not available tomorrow to do it. So I shot more flowers, close-ups of the church spire and everything, and then we put a little inspirational music under it. Whole thing takes about 30 minutes to watch. Um, and we have had people log in from as far away as Texas. They used to be members of the church, obviously can't attend. Also people that um, are self-quarantining because they're worried about COVID. So it's working very nicely in that regard. I think for Easter, we had 110 people watching the service, which is not bad for a, a small church. that has an active membership of maybe 30 or 35. Um, so again, not live production, but you know, production that's recorded live, edited for a later distribution. But overall, everybody's very pleased with the, uh, with the quality. I'm very happy with the quality. I, I realize the limitations of the cameras that I'm using. But um, the funniest story that came out of it is I needed a second tripod. I had a Manfrotto tripod and I wanted a second one. So I found a very nice Manfrotto carbon fiber tripod. And I could get that from B&H, but we have a local camera store and I wanted to throw them the business. So I said, this is the one I want. Let me know when it comes in. Well, a week went by, then two weeks, then three weeks, then four weeks, then a month, another week. And I would call every week. No, we don't have it yet. Or one time he said, well, the sales rep said, yeah, we'll have it. They ship out of a warehouse in New Jersey. You'll have it tomorrow. Didn't show up. So about almost eight weeks into this, the camera store owner finally called the president of Manfrotto and said, how hard is it to send me a tripod? And the, and the president said, what do you mean? He says, I ordered this thing two months ago. I don't even know what this guy's using for a tripod. And so president apparently went out to the warehouse, picked it out of stock himself, put it in a box and sent it to me. I had it the next day. So uh, some of the supply chain issues have been a little uh, wacko. <clears throat> but overall, a, um, people do appreciate the fact that they haven't missed a service. Um, and when we transition back to live services, we will be live streaming. For me, the technical question is, uh, because I have to run the signal from the choir loft 150 feet back to where the uh, the wired internet connection is. Do I go with a USB extension or, or HD base T? Either one will work. But right now I'm leaning towards USB because I'm seeing more of the cameras that I'm considering have USB output, or in some cases, all they have is a USB output. And we don't need anything really fancy. I've looked at some cameras that will allow you to preset two or three different positions with a little, like a TV remote control. So somebody could, um, you know, uh, mm -hmm. you can, move the camera for communion or for somebody at the second lectern and have that be a preset. So I'm trying to make it, as my friends at the Naval Air Defense Center used to say, sailor proof. So that anybody can use it. They don't have to know anything technical. Uh, so that's basically it. That's um, It's been a very interesting experience. People seem satisfied with it. Um, it the, I'm trying not to compromise on quality, good quality audio and video. Um, and just using whatever tools are available. And uh, my, I guess my overall message is I'm surprised at how good some of these tools really are. Today. Uh, I was going to finish up some stuff and take off. And I'll throw it back to Mark. Right, go All right, I gotta take this again. Oh. All right, thanks Pete, I appreciate that. And sorry, I thought I had my mic muted on that. I'd, one of my students working here with me. So, let's see. Uh, Peter or Dover, or Waldo, you just say, Paul, do you guys have anything to add? I'm not even sure they're there. Yeah. Hi, uh, uh, this is Peter Weitzel. Um, I'm just going to put in a um, a link to a UK Royal Television Society uh, webcast. Uh, that was looking at uh, recording and editing on mobile phones. Um, certainly some of the um, schools um, in the UK uh, just get their, um, it's almost a starting exercise, um, will get um, the, um, the students to, to actually try shooting um, on mobile phones to get their, their framing right, to understand uh, the need. Uh, first thing on mobile phone is clean the lens, get some of the lighting right, understand the fact that sound matters and all of this sort of basic stuff. Um, and the link that I, I sent you there um, is an hours long uh, webcast with one of the BBC's trainers um, showing you all sorts of uh, useful bits and pieces from uh, prompting uh, software that's free 
to assorted editing uh, and acquisition um, uh, software. Um, and um, that uh, you know, should get some of your students sort of started using their own phones. Um, unfortunately, of course, um, the uh, most of the uh, software runs on uh, uh, the iOS uh, platform. Um, but of course, most mobile phones in the world are, are, are Android. Uh, but that might 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 help you a bit. Um, I might I, I might put up uh, um, Coventry Cathedral's um, efforts for um, uh, doing uh, services. Again, they started off trying to live stream onto um, Facebook. Um, and that, for a whole host of reasons, doesn't uh, work. So they now pre-record, um, single camera shoot, um, um, uh, of uh, uh, stuff in the church. Um, from time to time, uh, other ministers contribute from home. Um, so it's uh, uh, a, a bit of an editing job for somebody who's. Um, qualifications are as a medical doctor as well as a priest uh, and certainly not a uh, not a media um, expert um, but we are beginning to look at um, uh, large quant well say large quantities but three or four PTZ cameras uh, going in the problem is you've got to cable it and that is always the problem um, uh, particularly uh, in ecclesiastical buildings um, uh, where ancient ones uh, are very nice. They have large columns which you can hide things behind. Uh, Coventry Cathedral is a gigantic barn um, and uh, very solid um, uh, marble floor. So the idea of cabling is not easy. But that's really uh, some contributions to work alongside what we've heard uh, so far this evening. Well, thank you. I uh, appreciate that and what, what you're doing. And, and I agree. I think that um, the, the cell phone or some smaller device would probably be the best way for students right now to, to try and figure out how do they want to capture something? How do they want to look at it and using the phone to do it? And to be honest, you know, I think this is going to become, you know, a more acceptable way of broadcasting that uh, we're not just sending out cameras. Uh, there'll be other devices being used, less expensive devices, and we'll, we'll see it in, in the real broadcast world now that they've gone to the extreme and they're going to slowly come back. But I, I, I think that we're going to see a lot of the um, a lot of interaction between inexpensive uh, cell phone and truly they're not inexpensive at thousands of dollars a piece, but compared to a camera, they're inexpensive. And then, you know, the larger setups and Things like the live view units and the Teradek units will still be out there, but making use of your your mobile broadband is is going to be pretty uh, pretty common for a while. So, anybody else want to step up and uh, and say anything? I, I want to throw out there that the um, the NDI uh, camera app for iOS and uh, for Android they had made it free for a while. Uh, it's usually a ten dollar app, but um, if you download the um, the free NDI toolkit, uh, you could turn your mobile phone, which for the most part, every one of these mobile phones are a 4K camera that you carry around in your pocket. You could turn your mobile phone into a high quality webcam uh, as long as it's on the same network as your computer, which clearly it would be. Um, so it's actually really good. And I've, I've actually used it. Uh, the latency and the, the audio, I have always had end up syncing up really well. So um, it, it's something that uh, to consider, even if you don't use it right away, if it's get it while it's free, um, and then you can download the free utility, uh, and you know you can record within the what Mark, what's it called uh, for Mac? I think it's just like for for me, it's Studio Monitor, but for you, I think it was just like Video Monitor or something. NDI Monitor, I think it's what NDI it's called. Monitor. Yeah. But you can record from within there too. So um, the app is free. And they just, uh, what, two weeks ago, they, they, they put the NDI uh, tool, like this uh, virtual input, out for Macintosh. So, um, you know, if you have an old Mac and you're running the NDI uh, virtual input, you can take your, 
your iPhone or your Android phone and make that be your webcam and now have a really nice looking camera on a five-year-old computer. Yeah, the NDI works. It's, it's, it's good, but the, the downside to that is you have to be on the same network. So that, that's where there's some, some hiccups. We, 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 were, we were actually experimenting with trying to uh, extend our NDI network uh, over, the, over a VPN, but because it's layer two, um, it, it's not easy. It's almost impossible, unless you're using like Sienna TV as a, as a hub. Right, that and Dante is is a pain when you're doing that. That all likes to be in the same, although Dante's changing. So, Paul, do you have anything to add? Um, no, I've been uh, out of touch with uh, the the folks that I used to work with to see what what they've been been doing lately. But uh, yeah, I should get uh, get a hold of them and find out. You know, I know they've got a bunch of Degero units, but I don't know what cameras they've been putting out with the uh, with the um, the different like the weather people and all the, that have been and sports people that have been working from home. Whether it's some of the extra um, regular Panasonic ENG cameras or uh, or the, the little ones that like the sports folks would take out for the, the Friday night uh, football games and all. So. Right. Okay. Well, I appreciate that. Thanks for adding to it. Um, I know that a couple of us have things at two o'clock here, so I'm going to kind of close this meeting here. And uh, Mark, what um, I would like to say, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, just mention two quick things. Um, yep. Go ahead, Pete. See if the camera comes back up again. Yep, hardly ever use this thing. God, is that what I look like? Yeesh, I need a haircut. Um, we probably all need haircuts. I just sent you all a link to a music video we produced uh, with a bunch of musicians in the Princeton area, all remotely, uh, some as far away as North Carolina. But the vast majority of them are using smartphones. What I found out from that is smartphone cameras are a lot better than laptop cameras, especially under low light. Um, I was amazed at how good some of them looked. So you might want to check that out. Also on the 24th of this month, which is two weeks from yesterday, uh, Simti and IABM are having a joint online event at noon. Um, you'll probably all get invites to that. Strongly suggest you log in because we did another music video with an even larger group of musicians all over the country, which we're gonna screen at the end of that uh, particular session. And you can see again, uh, the quality that we got, not only recording video on, on phones, but also uh, some of the vocal parts uh, on on smartphones and then being able to uh, sweeten them up in post-production and do things to make them sound like they're in a studio. Um, it was a pretty ambitious production. I really can't talk much more about it because it's going to have its premiere then. But if you're free at noon on the 24th, highly recommend uh, you sit in. It's only in a one hour long session. I don't know. They're going to be talking about where do we go from here? What's the future of production and everything else? So I think we're probably going to, like Ed Sullivan always used to do, we have the Beatles on at the end of the show. So I guess we'll probably be on at the end of the show too. I'm not sure. But um, try to make it if you can, and you can see some uh, really clever production. There's, it was very challenging to pull it off. A lot of things that, um, a lot of tricks that we had to pull to make it happen, but uh, we're very pleased with the result. Well, good. Have you um, just done a side note there, going to try a product or an online thing called Jam Kazam? Some people um, like it, some people don't. Yeah, yeah I've had latency's a little weird. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I've had I've had people. Um, uh, yeah, I've had people mention that to me. Um, I've seen some of the live stream jam sessions. Uh, they're okay. I was shooting for something that had a little bit more of a professional sound. So I said to everybody, um, you know, you'll get, you'll get the tracks you need to record to and I'll stitch it all together and we'll do something that, you know, it's obviously produced. It wasn't live, but um, it just sounds a whole lot better. So no, I haven't found much, haven't really found many of those programs that I really like that much. Now, I know Pro Tools you can put up in the cloud and everybody can can sit there and add their tracks to it and up and down and up and down. They make it a little bit easier with the with the way of, of sharing at, at that part, you know, but you know, that makes it rather than just well, we you know, used, sending um, a file. We, we simply had a Dropbox account, so we used that. 
For some people, we use Google Drive. Uh, we use WeTransfer a lot, which WeTransfer allow you to do up to two gigabytes at a time in files. So for the audio stuff, that was fine. For the video stuff, uh, ran the one problem. One guy decided to do all his video takes. He did multiple video takes, and he sent me a nine gigabyte file. So I got this alert from Dropbox that I was way over my my space is four and a half. And I said to him, the least you could do is cut it up into pieces. So I had to uh, temporarily join Dropbox Business and get the three th free 30 day trial so I could download his video, which I have no intention of, obviously no intention of paying for that. Um, <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it was the only way I could get his video. He, he kind of missed the point. It was like, if you're gonna do separate takes, make them separate files. Don't just send me one monster file. But overall, uh, everybody's very happy with the outcome. I learned a lot of tricks about doing certain effects in uh, Premiere that are not immediately evident going through the help menus is sort of intuit yourself, but uh, you'll see it if you, so if you can make it on the 24th, and I think even if you miss that meeting, it should be available for live streaming at some point uh, from Simpty. They'll just have it so you can watch it anytime you want, but it'd be kind of cool if you could make it for that. So um, between these two productions, and we're getting ready to do two more, learned a lot about this uh, collaboration uh, between people. Uh, for example, um, a building was being demolished across the street from one of our singers, and you could hear it on her track when I got it from her. You cannot hear it in the final mix. So you get pretty creative at times. Yeah, that's great. The the other platform we talked about before for video is Sony C, um, and we had a, a session on that too. So that that's great for collaborating with uh, with video. It's not it uses audio. You can upload audio to it as well, but it's more for video. So, all right, well, thanks all right. for all your input, um, Pete, appreciate that. And uh, Sean and Dover as well, and you know, Paul, you know, everybody that, that contributed, I appreciate it. I think he was saying he appreciates everybody's time and thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> that ends our meeting. Uh, let me get my Mark puppet. <laughs> Thanks, Sean. <laughs> it's like a Monty Python episode. Suddenly, oh the narrator God. was killed by a 16-ton weight. I, I really thought that it was my end. I was like, nope. I just got a nope. notification saying he's gone. <laughs> I'm like, I'm pretty okay. sure he lives in the middle of nowhere and probably lost his internet signal. <laughs> well, he, he he's actually oh, at he's, he's at Millersville. Now. Yeah, he's at Millersville. So tell me that they just like got a sudden storm and everything decided to. Go oh, to hell. it's raining! It is raining to beat the band here right now. This this is there was a tornado out near Pittsburgh as a result of this storm system. So that could be it. Hey, yeah, just, we got yeah. hit twice already. What do you uh, what do all you think of the new? go to meeting interface. Do you like it or not? So I, I don't mind it. I'll tell you what, I think that the video compression quality is pretty awesome. Yeah, you look uh, pretty good over here. Well, so I, I have a 4K camera. Um, mm -hmm. and then I'm just I, using my laptop. Yeah, um, well, I, so I, I didn't say this earlier. I, just, I said this in a previous meeting. I didn't think it was worth bringing up, but I, I ended up bringing a, a, basically a, a whole radio and TV studio home and put it in my basement. So I brought lighting kits and stuff like that, uh, and uh, like a C414. So I, I wanted it to look good because we're still producing content. So I just have a Genera, um light on top of it and away we go. I, and I really think GoToMeetings compression is the best that I've seen. It looks better than Zoom. Teams looks like shit, sorry. I don't care if Teams it's looks awful. It does, <laughs> looks really bad. Well, and the reason it, it looks bad is that Teams was not designed to be a video chat service first. Like, no. <laughs> if you if you go through the back end of Teams, it's a highly friggin' powerful tool for app building and, you know, collaboration and, like, integration into SharePoint and OneDrive and all this stuff. Video is just, like, an added thing. But then um, because of COVID-19, they were, like, pedal to the metal we got to we got to bring the video quality up. Well, I think whatever GoToMeeting is doing for coding, they've got a really good adaptive bitrate 
a streaming algorithm running here because of all the systems I've used uh, since this pandemic broke out. This has been the most reliable one. 